so here's our World Cup wall chart. And France now into the quarterfinals. They will play either Uruguay or Portugal in the quarterfinals. That's in Nizhny Novgorod next Friday afternoon. What an incredible end to that, Richard. It got very, very nervous, of course. Uh, sympathy for Messi could very well be the end of his Argentina career. They gave it absolutely everything. But that young man, we're seeing the emergence of a, a global superstar, are we? Yeah, I think so. I think his performance today was outstanding. I think the match as a whole was, was brilliant. It was everything that we hoped for. And yeah, it was just unfortunate. I think Argentina played their part in it. They just didn't have that bit of quality in the end at certain times. They get into good areas and fail to deliver. But um, for me, France were the winners overall. I think when they do click into gear, they're, they're an exciting team to watch. Today, they probably played in fits and starts. They weren't, it wasn't a full 90 minute performance, but when they needed it, they produced it. Their mentality was good. and. Yeah, Mbappe was outstanding today. Eamon, have they answered your doubts about their brittle mentality, the French? They certainly have. I mean, it was put up to them in a big way. And Mbappe has emerged now. I mean, everyone is asking, including me, where's the next Ronaldo, where's the next Lionel Messi? I'm not seeing too much on the horizon. This guy is it. And we, you know, we've seen him before in glimpses, but to do it on such a big day for France today, he was brilliant. He, he, the first penalty was conceded trying to stop him, and then he scored two great goals. Uh, he is extraordinary. He's still a teenager, uh, and he seems to be an incredibly good type of lad. So, if, if for nothing else, seeing him emerge the World Cup is, uh, I think, enhanced greatly. And the world of football is because we, we need great players, and he is one. And we got shots there, Didi, of, of another great player, Messi. Yeah, and you, I can't help but feeling a bit sorry for him because um, if there ever was a one-man team in history, uh, I think we saw it this afternoon. Um, because apart from him, very little else. Yes, Di Maria came up with a goal, um, but the overall play it just wasn't enough. And what, what disappointed me the most, they got himself back in the game, which didn't look likely after the first, first 15, 20 minutes. And once I went 2-1 up, I thought this will be a, a mountain to climb for France to come back here. Um, and the way they conceded the goals, because that's what you associate them with. You know, they're dogged, they're stubborn, they're hard to break down. And it was just, obviously, the, the equaliser was a tremendous strike by Pavard. Um, but the cross didn't get stopped twice. Um, and it was just too easy the way they conceded. And, uh, yeah, France did well. You've got to give him credit for coming back uh, after being 2-1 down. But I just feel that... The Argentinian players, they'll be sitting in the dressing room thinking it should be us in the last eight, not them. Well, it is the French who were in the last eight. 20 years, of course, since they won their first World Cup on home soil. Are they going to go all the way this year? Well, they've got themselves into the quarterfinals, knocking Argentina, the two times champions, out. Welcome back. Well, it's France's day in Kazan. They are through to the quarterfinals. What a brilliant goal that was from Pavar. We look at that and analyse it again in due course. But they had their worrying moments, the French, but they got through them and they're into the last eight. Kylian Mbappe. Well, we knew all about him. We have for a couple of years, but he really has announced his uh, arrival on the world stage. And we wonder about Argentina. What now for them? What now for Messi? Will he hang around for the coach? A squad mostly made up of, what, 15 players, 30 or over. We're, we're going to look, at Richard, at the, the, the goal. When you go back, so much happened in that second half. And, you know, three minutes after the restart, Mercado pops up with the goal that puts Argentina in front. Yeah, France came out like they'd finished the first half with no intensity about them at all and they looked like they were just going to fold the way it was going. Um, Di Maria done really well down the wing, got the, won the free kick. Mm. But it's going to come on. Yeah, we're going to have a look at it now because, yeah. you know, they, they scored just before half-time, they scored yeah. just after half-time. And, and the same thing, the two goals are, are similar because on the first one for Di Maria, there's nobody closing down. Here it's Matuidi. we got Messi with his back turned, heading away from goal and he lets him turn, gets the shot in. Mercado, I think, think he tries to pull his foot out of the way, but it was a perfect start for Argentina. But for France to go forward, I think this is where they have to concentrate a bit more. They need to get tighter to their men there, try and force them out of the box. But no, he lets them turn, he gets the shot in. And yeah, that was the whole thing, because we expected France to come out with a, with a new lease of life to try and start, to try and impose themselves. But whatever happened at half-time, they just came out and that was the goal, really, that gave them the kick they needed. The coach still had no-one to celebrate with. Um, how then, Didi, did 
the French get back into it. Because once that goal goes in, their mentality was even more brittle at that time in the match, you would have thought. Yeah, it, 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 uh, you felt, watching the game, it, it, uh, it, it's going to take something special to, to get back in the game because this is obviously the game. It suits. Defender's got to do better, Mikhail. He's so close. He's got to stop the ball and he comes to Pavard. I've seen a lot of him this year for Stuttgart. He plays as a centre-back. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really, really good player. Um, the cross has to be stopped, but then this is just uh, technique, composure, gets his foot through the ball and he bends it into the far top corner. It's a hard ball to hit because it bounces up pretty high. Uh, and for a defender to hit that ball, it's, um, yeah, it's, just, it's just a brilliant, brilliant finish. Um, but it took something special and I, I felt at the time if Argentina would have hung on another five or ten minutes um, the outcome might have been a different one but you've got to you've got to have the breaks and when you do get the breaks you've got to take advantage that's what France did and then Eamon we had two kind of quick fire interventions from a 19 year old yeah an amazing goal this goal is it, well, we know about his power and his pace but this really is about his football intelligence uh, and you know he his first touch here is amazing. One touch into the space and a goal. Now, the keeper might have done better, but watch the touch he takes when the ball ricochets to him. This is incredible football intelligence. One touch, bang. He knows exactly where that space is and he scores. That's real quality and that shows he's a natural footballer as well as an athlete. We know about the pace of the power. We saw it for the penalty, but that was really uh, amazing and you know uh, we see again Giroud does really well here beautifully weighted pass uh, and it only takes about five seconds and at this stage it shows Argentina Argentina in complete disarray and they're ragged they're all over the place and they're punished and that's what should happen in the World Cup finals playing for a place at the quarterfinal and it does happen uh, this is an amazing goal no hesitation and it's in the back of the net. So, uh, this has been a big day for him. It's been a big day for France as well. They still have the faults that we identified, but they have a player mm. who will punish you severely. And I, as I said, we knew it was about power and pace, but it's the intelligence, that touch into that space uh, to score a goal to put you in front. I, th Superb. I think what makes him special is, obviously we saw about the penalty uh, in the first half he's got pace to burn. Uh, there's probably no quicker player in world football at the moment. And he's got a quick mind as well. As, as Emin just pointed out, the, the, the sharpness in his head, how quick he uh, sees the situation, sees the picture, knows exactly what to do, that, that instinct. Because a lot of the times when you, when you go through the last 20, 30 years, the sharpest players have always been the slow ones because they had to find a way to get around the pitch, whether it's forwards or, or, yeah. or centre midfielders. But for him to have the pace he's got and to have the sharp mind, I think that sets him apart from everybody else. And the guy is a, is a superstar. He's only 19. If he keeps his, his feet on the ground, um, he could... I'm not saying he, he's ruling uh, European or world football for the next 10 years, but he's got the potential... Uh, to pick Ballon d'Ors up um, as frequently as a Messi and a Ronaldo have. Because at the moment there's not much out there when it comes to really the top, top bracket apart from Neymar. Um, and to do this 19 years old, where a lot of the hopes uh, rest of the, of the country rest on your shoulders, uh, to do the way they did, score two goals, get the penalty, um, brilliant. He's a modest and sensible person as well. In contrast, I would say, to Pogba. All that messing around, what Frank Lampard called the YouTube footballer, and it was a, a disparaging remark from Frank Lampard, mm. who's very respected in the game. This, is, this fella is different. He's a professional, he's a human being. I think Richard was telling me he's given uh, his match fees, isn't he, to sick children? Yeah, to disabled children. We're saying, going back two years ago, we went to a League Cup game in, uh, in, in Monaco to watch them against Nantes. And they made a few changes and they brought this guy on, but they, they have no programmes, no team sheets, nothing like that. So you're like, who is he? Who is this fella? And every time he got the ball, my son is seven at the time and he's on the edge of his seat. He's like going, who's this? Dad? This is amazing. <laughs> this, this is like, he's so exciting to watch. When he moves across the grass, he hardly touches it. He's just, just like silk the way he plays. He's, and then today, to do it on a stage like this is, is an amazing thing for him. And like Amy says, he, is, he seems to be a, a level-headed yeah. person. 
a top footballer and he'll just go from strength to strength now. It's a brilliant discovery for football today, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's a great mm. player. Wow. Yeah, because, and, and, yeah, and, and, we, we didn't know who was going to come after yeah, Ronaldo, no, Messi, as yeah. you said, and, and OK, Neymar, and that debate continues. Yeah, and, but and, and we had the discussion, uh, I think the most goals were scored in the group stage of set pieces. I think nearly half or more than half the goals were scored of set pieces. So it becomes harder and harder to break teams down because there's a lot of uh, physicality. There's, the, the players are picked, uh, you know, the quicker they are, the more chance they've got to play. And you need players in, in world football where you pay money to watch them. And there haven't been, apart from the, the two super stars we, we, are, we are blessed with at the moment for the last decade with Messi and Ronaldo, there haven't been an awful lot of young players coming through. But this guy has the ability and the humility, uh, as, mm. we, as we hear, uh, to, really, to be, really be the person who gets people on the edge of their seats and, and make him pay to watch him. It's kind of the, the, the changing of the guard, I suppose, and in this particular match, Messi, perhaps the end of his Argentina career, and Mbappe announcing his yes. arrival in the same game. You've yeah. got two going in opposite well, directions, that's the perhaps. nature of the game. Yeah. It goes back to Pele and before Pele to Pushkas, uh, to all the great pl yeah. players. And the, the great players of each generation. And uh, it, it's important not just that they, we keep seeing them, mm. because football, I think, is dying and the talent uh, is noticeable, the lack of talent in this World Cup, really. But he is um, a site that will make kids want to play the game yeah. and it makes us old professionals and particularly this old professional you know feel happy to see somebody like that he wasn't today. even born when they won the the world cup no it's it's, it's amazing mm. and he he is it you, you yeah. know we first saw him play for monaco at the Etihad against manchester city and he scored an amazing goal into the roof of the net uh and that night oh yeah mm. Mm. And is that, you know, you can imagine uh, all, all, all over the world, wherever they were covering this match today, this similar conversation will be happening yeah. about him. Like, is that too much pressure to put on the lad? You know, we're, we're talking about him in Ronaldo and, and Messi terms? I don't think so. I think he's had enough games over the short career that he's had. He's done an, an awful lot in terms of what he's done in the Champions League. He's been very, he's played very well. This is just the next level for him. This is this is the next progression for him. Sure. He's always going to be a top player, and now he's getting the chance to show it to the world. Um, but yeah, just when you see him, when you see him play, he's he's frightening. He's just yeah. he's got so much going for him, and he wants to improve. He's got better and better each season. He's gone there, and I think for the next level for him, he'll probably end up at a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. And, yeah. Testing himself in a bigger league. His temperament, like you for think, how much? Well, <laughs> it'll be it'll be a, an awful lot of money. But he has a real good temperament. Uh, if you contrast him to Neymar <clears throat> and Pogba, who are the other kind of people talk. I mean, I wouldn't put Pogba in the com conversation, but certainly Neymar has been in the conversation since the last World Cup. But he's you know he's gone off the rails. This guy doesn't look as if he's going to. Mm. He's very rooted, and again, Richard was mm. saying he lived at home with his family. Uh, he's not on private jets. He's not dyeing his hair. He's not doing that stuff. It uh, might happen, though. Well, we we pray that it won't. I think it's a lot is to do with your temperament, yeah. and he seems to have a lovely temperament. Uh, and I think he's just—it's amazing that we saw this today. I mean, he's won the match. Yeah. Single-handed. So, sorry, the beauty about him is I've seen him playing this season and he'll go through and he'll miss one-on-ones and he'll just pick his head up and he'll go again and he'll miss again, but he never shies away from it. He just wants to keep going and keep going. And like today, you see it, one-on-one, finish it. So he, he, he's, he's never afraid and he's learning and he looks like someone who probably spends time in the training field after, after training, trying to improve, trying to make himself better and the results are there for all to see. Yeah, it was so impressive, and there's, there's a lot more to come from him at this competition. We're, we're just going to spool forward, I suppose, to the really almost the last kick of the game. It wasn't quite. It was, it was um, Aguero's third goal for Argentina, and then there was this frantic thing at the end, and Fazio very nearly forced extra time, did he? Yeah, and, and Ronnie said it in commentary, what would have happened if, if Aguero was on the pitch maybe a bit longer? Uh, fantastic ball in from Messi. It's a great header. He just glances it. Um, it's a fantastic finish. He's still got a lot to do there. And, um, and then with the last kick, he thought, well, four or five minutes were up. But he thought, maybe one more chance. And the ball comes in. And I think in the end, 
it's Di Maria who takes the ball of Fazio, <clears throat> of Fazio's head, and I'm not yeah. sure whether we've got a a, a replay of this. Um, if he doesn't go for the ball, which I don't think he should have gone because he couldn't score in the position he was, um, yeah, it would have been a, a fantastic ending to a, a to an uh, absolutely uh, awesome game. Uh, this is what knockout football is all about. Yeah. Uh, it was just a brilliant spectacle, and if people didn't know, the World Cup had started a few weeks ago. They yeah, know now. It's here. We've only 15 games left after this. You know, the, when, you, when you look at Argentina and all, I mean, the massive problems that they had, yeah. that the coach having this meltdown, um, you know, Messi having his own struggles and the pressure on his shoulders, like the, the, the way they did kind of fold in the second half, was that always in, in a way likely to happen because of all the problems they had and because of all the ordinary players that are there in that team? Well, yes, I, I, I wouldn't forget the first 45 minutes where they came from a goal down, you know, got themselves mm. back in the match, dominated possession and did as much as they possibly could do with the legs they had and the ability they had. And then they, you know, took the lead. Mm. And I think when they took the lead, I think it released France in a way. We might as well go for it, yeah? And that sometimes happens in the game. You go a goal down, and the nerves are gone. Now you, you focus on what you've got to do. And that was what France did very successfully. And then I think that all the sort of problems Argentina have with organisation, with players' yeah. power and all of that, that kicked in. For uh, Mbappé's final goal, you could see that they were, France were running planes through a rabble. They were all over the place. Nobody was back in their position. Uh, and with Giroud slipping the ball through, uh, you know, it was a, simp a relatively simple goal to score. But at that stage, they were in rag order. And we know they were in rag order. They barely qualified. Uh, Messi had to score a hat-trick in Ecuador uh, to get them here. Mm. So it comes out in the end somewhere along the line when it's a mess, doesn't it? There's yeah, no and, and look, let's, let's just enjoy. It may well be the last time we see uh, Lionel Messi wear that famous blue and white shirt, but we're just going to uh, look at, at uh, some of the moments from, from his uh, perhaps final performance for his country, did he? Yeah, he's, uh, it's hard for him because he knows that if I don't do it, nobody else will. And here, um, this is when he was 4-2. He's probably got to take another touch or try to manufacture something, get it on his, on his, uh, on his stronger foot. He's running away from goal and he can't generate any power on the shot and it's a comfortable save for for Lloris um, and he must be thinking because they always in Argentina there's a big discussion is he as good as Maradona who is a better one but it's it's so hard and, and attitude I mentioned it before attitude gets you a long way but it doesn't get you all the way and I think once they went behind today in the second half they came back once in the first half once they went down on this, uh, for the second time I think they felt we haven't got the quality to do yeah. this again and uh, yeah, they, they did come through some uh, tricky situations in the past, um, but when you play against a quality athlete like France, um, attitude or mentality is not enough. You need that little bit of, of, of quality, and you need it in both ends of the pitch, and they have been not good enough going forward, where I was disappointed. Um, yes, they have uh, deficiencies at the back, but the way they let uh, Hernandez cross for both goals is just too yeah. easy, because it, was, it wouldn't have taken much of an effort to stop these crosses. Um, and that's what uh, eventually cost them. And you just have to say that uh, if you look at the four games they played, they probably didn't deserve to go to the last eight. Um, and I think the right team won today. Mm. And uh, Richard, your thoughts on, on Messi now? Like he'll be 35. <coughs> Christmas 2022 is the next World Cup in Qatar. Mm. Like, will we see him there? Argentina may not even qualify. They probably will. But like, will he still be around? It's hard to see it. It is hard to see it. It's uh, it would obviously be a shame the day he does, yeah. does retire from it. But um, it's just so difficult for him today. He's probably making managerial decisions, captain's decisions, trying to motivate players, trying to look after his own game at the same time. It's, it's too much for, for one player. He needs help from somewhere else. And unfortunately, the quality of Argentina's team is just not there. I think the best, well, we've seen the best finisher they have is Aguero, and they leave him on the bench till, yeah. till too late in the game. And Messi needs space to play in. And if you put him up there or wherever we started up centre forward, he ends up on the right wing, he ends up at right back trying to get the ball, trying to get himself involved. And yeah, it, it's too much. I mean, he, he had a hand in two goals today and he nearly he, he had an opportunity to score himself. So he's still affecting the game, he's still brilliant. But you need to give him 
the space to play. You need to have other distractions in your team that the team isn't just focusing on Messi the whole time. And, and I think four years is obviously too far away. We don't even know where they're still playing in four years' yeah. time. Um, and then we've mentioned it before, there's 15 players past 30. Yeah. If there was a, an Mbappe coming through, if there was somebody else coming through, he may say, well, I hang around because when these guys are four years older, they'll be better players than they are now and maybe we have a chance and I can't see him going to the World Cup in four years' time when they haven't got a chance and, and the way this uh, the squad is, is set up and, and the players who are there, um, I think they go to the World Cup in four years' time with probably less chance yeah. than they went this year and uh, yeah, they didn't go as any of the favourites this, this year. Yeah, like Eamon, they're facing a, a, a tough time. Their youth system I think has been a shambles yeah. for the last 12 years. The Football Federation has very little money. This manager yeah. will more than likely leave along yeah. with an awful lot of players. Yeah, and they'll come to Europe, the players, because that's where the money is. Mm. The Brazilian players likewise. All the best South American players come to Europe because the money in Europe is uh, extraordinary yeah. uh, and that eventually will kill your own game in your own country because you don't have those players playing you don't have uh, you know the top players playing mm. in your own country people aren't going to go to your games and slowly but surely the game will die the 600 Brazilians playing the trade outside Brazil did you know that professional yeah. players mm. 600 and Fred is one of them. Yeah. He can't get in the squad, but he'll be playing for Manchester United next year. There's guys we've never heard of playing for yeah. Shakhtar Donetsk all over the place. Uh, and the very best of them, of course, are playing in the Brazilian side now. So. 52 million he cost. OK, well, uh, some perhaps tough days ahead for Argentina, some great days ahead. Well, a great one for sure. Maybe there's more for France as they go through to the quarterfinals.